Welcome to the next section of our test project course. And in this section, we'll be talking about test case design and execution. Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExecuteAutomation.com. And in this video, I'll be talking about working with test case steps in much detailed fashion. All right, so let's get started. Test steps. Test steps in test project holds information such as types, actions, failure behaviors, and step behaviors. Well, we have been talking about creating test cases in our test project course so far until our previous section of this course. And we saw how we can leverage the power of test project to perform various different actions. We also saw in our previous video that if there is any failure in our test steps, it will automatically take the screenshot of the failure steps of our application under test and then it will show in the report. As you can see, everything is happening by default with some of the actions which is already available within our steps. For instance, you can see there is a comments where we use these comments to show in the test steps. And then there is a type which is the action. And again, we'll talk about types in much detail in our next video of this section. Type and actions are kind of very, very interrelated and they will change based upon the type that you choose. And there is something called as on failure behavior where you can specify that if a test fails, what you need to do. So if there is a failure in the step, then you can take the screenshot and you can also specify some of the actions that you can do. You can also take the screenshot for every actions that you're going to perform. Similarly, you can pass the step and then you can specify the timeout period of a step and then you can specify the re repetition of the step. For instance, if you want to repeat the same action multiple times, you can specify that here so that it can repeat the same step again and again. So these are the things that you can do with the test steps and these are available out of the box within test project, which will be very, very helpful for you to perform any actions. And also you can see there is something called as enabled and disabled where if you click this toggle, you can disable this step so that it won't execute in your test execution at all. Test step can be disabled, duplicated and deleted as well. As you can see in our previous slide that we discussed how we can disable the step, we can also duplicate the step and also we can mark it as deleted so that it cannot be reverted back. So these are some of the options which are very, very handy while you work with the test steps, pretty much like how you do with other automation testing tools like Catalan Studio or QTP or Test Complete, something like that. You can also control the test behavior in one place. For instance, you can rename the test case and you can set the global settings options and then you can control the input and output parameter of the test. If you remember in our previous video, we were discussing about the input parameters and parameters and also jobs and we saw how we can leverage the power of these options for our test case. So in order to control all of these in one place within our test case, you can do using these options. And finally, test case settings is one of the global toggle of your test case so that you can specify that you need to pass a step for a certain period of time and then you can specify what has to happen if there is any failure within your test. So by default it is continue test even if there is any failure it will just continue the test and then you can specify the default step timeout and then default device. So this is the iPhone device that I use to connect within my test. You can change the default device behavior if you want and you can do everything in one place within the test case settings. So these are some of the cool things that you can do within your test project's test case. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Chrome browser. So this is the same project that we were discussing in our previous video of this course. So what I'm gonna do is this. So if you click this particular test step, you can see that these are some of the default options which is available out of the box. So you can see for the research application, this is a step which is created out of the box once you start doing the recording. And then you can see there is a comment and there is a type here. If you click this type, you can see it is an action type. And let me close this guy. And this action it's gonna perform is this one. So it's gonna reset the application. So if I click this, you can see there are various different kinds of actions that you can perform. And once again, this is something we'll be discussing in our next video of this section. But as of now, just stay informed that you can 
see that these are the type and actions are something which, which will go hand in hand to perform certain operation. And similarly, you can see there is a on failure behavior. So if the test fails, you can fail the test or you can continue the test or you can use the test defaults or you can do a recovery test. So you can do all these options from here. Again, for the recovery test, if you select it, you can then select a test that you need to run once the test fails. Something like you can specify, let's say if I'm searching for this YouTube application with some certain input values and if the test fails for some reason, then you can specify another test which is going to be helpful for reverting the application back to the state where this particular step has left. So this is very, very handy. It's more like an exception handling or error handling that is available in QTP or test complete where it will revert the application to the state where this particular step has to perform the action. So this is very, very cool. So you can do all the recovery test within this particular step itself. So this is another option that you can leverage the power of. And then you can also specify the screenshot that you can take. So you can see it will take the screenshot only if it is failure, but there is an option called always. Again, this always is currently turned off, but if you're going with the enterprise version of the test project, you will have this particular option enabled. Since I have signed up for the free version, this particular option is currently disabled for me. So this is another way of taking the screenshots for you. And then you can pass the step something like this. For instance, currently my step has says the step has step pass is none, but you can still do a pass for before step and after step, and then you can use some test defaults. So these are some of the other options which is available out of the box. You can specify the step timeout and then you can specify the step repeat. So if I just change my attention to the click subscription, you will see this particular step pass behavior is completely different from the one which is available within this reset app. So you can see for the reset app, there is nothing called as step pass or step timeout. But for click subscription, you can see that there is a step pass which says use test default. And again, this test default is something which is coming from the settings. So if I go to the settings, you can see that the default timeout period is 15,000 milliseconds. So it is coming from this particular timeout over here. Use test default, right? And you can specify it if you want. Again, this is something that you can override the value like the one which you're looking for. So these are some things you can do within this step pass behavior. And then you can also repeat the steps like how many times you can also specify like three or two or one, something like that over here. And then you can perform the operation. We have discussed about the element finding in our previous videos already, like how you can work with. So I'm just going to skip this particular option for now. So these are some of the cool options that you can do within a step of our test projects test case. And coming back to disabling a step. So for instance, this particular close app is something that I just created to test how the action works. So if I want to disable this particular option, I can just select this and you can see there is an option called disable. So I can just select that and you can see that this particular option will be like disabled. It is not very much highlighted. And if you want to disable some other steps, something like library, trending and watch button or something like that. So I can do this multiple select option over here and then I can just select these options and then I can specify something like disabled steps here and you can see that test project is intelligent enough to disable things for me and now if I try to run this particular test it is going to skip all those steps for me and then it is going to execute the test. So these are some of the other coolest things that you can do within the test projects test cases. And you can see that this has got passed and it has only executed and you can see the green color line here. It only executed the particular step which is currently enabled rather the disabled steps. Really, really cool. And coming back to the settings, the global settings of the test case, if I hit the settings, you can see that the default step pass is none. But if you specify before for each and every step, it is going to pass the test execution for thousand milliseconds 
and then it is going to perform the operation. So for instance, if I'm going to give the uh, milliseconds as 1000, I think this is the one which is going to make more sense. And then you can see that it says that pass for 1000 milliseconds before executing a step. And then you can see that continue on failure. So if the test fails, it's not going to stop there, but it's going to continue the test for me, which is really cool. And then I can specify the timeout period. So let's say if I feel that my application is much faster enough, so 10,000 milliseconds is more than enough for me. So I'm just going to select that. And then I can select the checkbox. And if I try to run this test, you can see this time the test is going to be a little slower for like one second because I have specified 1000 milliseconds there. So you can see the application is a little slower than previous uh, execution cycle. You can see every time it's going to click that and it's waiting for 1000 milliseconds and then it is performing the operation there. There you go. Right? So this way you can see that we can control the global behavior of the test case from here. And now coming back to the another option of input and output parameter. So if I select that, you can see for this particular test, as we created in our previous video, I could able to see the input parameter here. So I can also create another input parameters if I want. I can add it from here without going to the particular step. That is really cool. So you can do that as well. And coming back to the jobs, you can assign the test to the job which supports the test. So for instance, I'm going to select this iOS mobile test jobs from here. So I don't really have to drag and drop from the previous step. Rather, I can directly select the job from here. And if I hit OK, it is going to assign this particular test to this job. And it is saying that succeeded to assign the test to the iOS mobile test job. Right. So you can do all sort of jazz from here within this particular test project steps. So these are some of the cool things that we can do within test projects test case steps. In our next video, we'll discuss how to work with different kinds of test case types, something like element action, action and test in much greater detail. So that's it guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.